You see, I will vanish. I'm going to disappear. I am going to go back to the Father. And this happens in Acts chapter 1 as Acts opens and Jesus says to his disciples, hey, go tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. What's the promise of the Father? You've got it on the screen, John 6, 63. The flesh profits you nothing. The Spirit gives life. If I speak a word to you, that word is Spirit. That's Holy Spirit. That word is the Holy Spirit and that word is life. The promise of the Father is going to be the life of the Holy Spirit inside of the believer. Jesus says, I have to go away. If I don't go away, he can't come to you because I'm going to be in the way. My flesh is going to be in the way of you believing me in the spirit because all you're ever going to want to do is come hang out with me in the natural whenever you need to realize that I'm not just in the natural, I'm in the spirit. Do you see what Jesus is doing? Jesus is divorcing you from the tangible, from falling in love with the stuff you can touch, taste, feel, and smell because all that the Jews had ever done is touch, taste, feel, and smell. Lamb's blood, incense, burning altars, water, washings, priesthoods, jingling bells on the robes of the priest, the, the blowing of, of horns, the wearing of shawls, the carrying of tabernacles, all of the trappings of performance-based religion. You could touch it, you could taste it, you could smell it. Therefore, you didn't even need faith in it. You don't need faith in what you can see. You don't need faith today to believe that this thing is right here. And if you doubt it, you can come up after service, you can touch it, you're pretty confident it's real. Faith not required. And that's a problem because where faith is not required, there is no life. There's just your performance. So Jesus says, what if I disappear? I got to go away. I got to get out of here. Because if I don't get out of here, you're never going to learn to walk in faith. And you're never going to learn to trust that wherever you are, I am. Now, what have we done with this message in 2,000 years? Well, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus does ascend to his father. And the disciples go tarry in Jerusalem and they wait 10 days. And on the day of Pentecost, when the day of Pentecost has fully come, they were all in one mind, one accord in one place. And the Holy Ghost was poured out. And what happens is the Holy Spirit goes out from there like ripples on a pond. Jesus said in Acts 1.8, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and Hogansville, Georgia. Right? Uttermost part of the earth. So he's not going to start in Hogansville, Georgia. He said, I'm going to start in Jerusalem. I'm going to move to Judea. And he watched the book of Acts. And the book of Acts starts in Jerusalem. And the ripples go to Judea. And the ripples go to Samaria. The ripples go to the other most part of the earth. What is he doing? He's internalizing the same spirit he had when he was on the earth in the flesh so that that Holy Spirit can go out as ripples on a pond and touch the world. Jesus confined himself to about a 30, 40 square mile area in his life, a radius in which he hardly even left that spot. And he was proving to people that it's not the flesh that's going to make the difference, but I'm going to deposit in you the Holy Spirit. So the full answer to the question is, what if I disappeared? Well, if I disappeared, don't worry, because my flesh doesn't profit you, but my spirit, which is words, profit you. And don't worry, I'm going to disappear, but on the day of Pentecost, I'm going to reappear, and I'm going to do it inside of you. So I'm going to drop the Holy Spirit inside of my church, and the Holy Spirit is going to work like a seed in the ground. The kingdom is going to spread. Lives are going to be transformed. Lives are going to be changed Go to John chapter 14. Let's see Jesus take this a little bit further with his disciples. John chapter 14, verse 19. A little while longer and the Lord will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. I want to I just stir that for a moment, that verse. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. That's simple. I'm going to disappear. Agreed? You're not going to see me. Natural eyes aren't going to see me more. I'm going to disappear. This is the ascension. And I don't think the ascension has anything to do with the slow rise of Jesus. The ascension has to do with the vanishing of Jesus from the natural, disappearing into the spiritual, so that he can reappear in the spiritual in you. Otherwise, what's the point of the day of Pentecost? See, that's why, we have, that's why we think the Holy Ghost is the inferior member of the Godhead. Because we think the Holy Ghost is the next best thing to having real Jesus. If you were to test the theology of most Christians and really dig, the Father's amazing. You have his, we think we have his love in effect. Jesus is the apex of that love. That's the best expression. The Holy Ghost will do. Until I get to heaven. That's the way a lot of people think about the Holy Ghost. And the fact that we've made the Holy Spirit an inferior member of who God is in his state of being. We've insulted the Godhead and who God is in his state of being. And because we think the Holy Spirit is inferior, we also think the Holy Spirit is merely an influence. 
I call this the two eyes problem in the church. The Holy Spirit, two eyes. He is inferior and he is an influence. Both of these are wrong, by the way. But this is the way that we approach him. The Holy Spirit is the inferior member. He just does what God tells him to do. He just runs around doing whatever God says do. God says go here, he goes here. He, he's subservient to God in a way in which God casts him into the different corners of the earth. But he's also just an influence. He influences your decisions. He doesn't indwell you. He just influences. I think both of those are wrong. The Holy Spirit is not inferior. Jesus said, if I speak it, it's the Spirit. How is that inferior? It's the Spirit of Jesus moving outward at the speed of light. Ripples on a pond. Right? He's also indwelling, not an influence. Lives inside of you. How do we know this? Well, because look at our scripture again. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will. Because I live, you will live also. Now, how is it that the world's going to not be able to see him? But his disciples are going to be able to see him. At that day, 20, you will know that I'm in the Father, you are in me, and I am in you. I'd love for everybody to just stare at this for a moment because I want to make sure we grab the power of this theology. At that day, what day? At the day that I disappear, not at the coming of Jesus, but at the day that I disappear, at the day that the world can no longer see me. Are we in that day? Yes, physically, the world can no longer see Jesus. On that day, you will know that where is Jesus? In the Father, where are you? In Jesus. Where is Jesus? Let's try that again. It's okay, take your time. We got, there's a lot of theology this bumps up against. Whenever Jesus is no longer physically visible, where is he? In the Father. Where are you? In Jesus. Where's Jesus? In you. He's both, how can he both be? That's the confusion. How can he both be in the Father and in you at the same time? Because you are in Jesus. Jesus is in the Father. Therefore, the Father and Jesus are in you. You go, where's the Holy Ghost? Jesus already told you what the Holy Ghost looks like and sounds like. He said, if I say it, that's the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is that thing, that entire verse that gels all of that together, not in a place called glory, not in a place called heaven where Jesus is on one throne, God's on another throne, Satan's in front of him, firing out DVDs of yesterday's sin, but instead the Father is inside of you and you are inside of him and both of you are inside of Jesus and Jesus is inside of you.